The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Yeah, I just did an hour. I did the uh, market kickoff, Tommy O'Brien show. Well, I can't say I did the show, I did his hour. Uh, because he does it in a very special way. He does it using fundamentals and technicals, just a fabulous job. And uh, it's just not my metier. That's not my wheelhouse. I like the technicals. And uh, so uh, it was a little different. What we're looking at here is the Dow's up 735. 30,219. We've not seen the 30,000 level since... Uh, the gap down on the 22nd, where it hit 30,302 the very next day, it gapped down, did the Chapman Wave Roman candle. We're actually now above that candle, but it took one, two, three, four, about eight sessions to do that. This is really important. What we're looking at here means that there's a chance for the V-shaped recovery, meaning a V-shaped pattern that has the MACD finally cross positive it just momentarily right now. It is very close. It hasn't done it yet. Stochastic's very weak at 16%. It needs to get to the 22 28% level to say, hey, this can last a little longer. <coughs> Excuse me. But that on-balance volume that I've been talking about for a week now gave an extremely oversold reading. Remember, I don't use oversold readings in the MACD or the stochastic, I use it only on the on-balance volume. Even the RSI, which is running nicely here, did give a reading, but I try not to use that. Just on-balance volume for me is just one of the triggers. However, look at this. The DOG, this is one-to-one -one short, the Dow, and we've, been, we've used this, uh, we've been long since way down here. Uh, the Dow is at about 33,300 on the upside. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoops, let me just get a little. The voice is not yet 100%. It's getting there. We use this as a means of being short the Dow. And uh, from the 30,300 level, we've taken a little bit off. It did hit 38.45. We're in from the uh, 35. Uh, Point forty three area. Oh no, no, sorry. Well, that was that was wrong. Then we we were long from thirty three dollars and thirty seven cents on the twenty second of, of August. So this is something we've been anticipating, and now I still we are still holding most of the position. Why? Because I don't think we're done yet for the for the choppy choppy sideways move that I'm anticipating to do some retesting, but. At the same time, in very near term, we are along the Dow via the diamonds. Very oh, unbelievably lucky to have got it yesterday on that brief pullback. Um, and and then it just took off. It just, wow, took off. Um, so all I can say is that within that context, we can expect, oh, let me just show you the pattern that we were looking at. So I had for the DOG, not on the low, the fulcrum low or the plumb line low of the 20, of the 16th of August at 32.49, I'd use a doji candle, special candle, uh, as my midpoint. And I'd say that from the high of 37.52 made in June down to 32.49 in August, if you had to use the midpoint, it would just go on for too long. So sometimes when you have to use your plumb line and move it to the left or the right, it's art artistic of course, I have theory, I have rules for that, so it's not artistic, purely artistic, but yeah, there's license, let's put it that way. So within that context, um, it came in within a couple of days sooner than the left side low, and uh, it went to a peak D, then in the Chapman Way, you remember we were speaking about that, the fourth highest peak, let me just show you this for those people new to my work, try to identify the lowest low bar, count each successively higher peak 
at a certain point after the lows made, you go from a, a, a starting point to a buy signal, then it gets upgraded to a buy mode. A buy mode means I'm anticipating at least four higher peaks to peak D. It can go E, F, and G. It can't even recycle the D for the Chapman Wave instant restart to go to yet another four peaks high. We just saw that in the one-minute chart. Let me just show you here. I want to talk apples to apples, so let's just talk about this particular pattern. Here it is. Uh, there, right there is the Chapman Wave instant restart in the one-minute chart, and now we've gone to a peak E, and we're digesting gains, right? And now what I do is I like to do the measurements to the left, so on the left side, well, we haven't even started a turnaround, but just let's say the technicals here are much weaker. So there's a chance that we start to do a little digesting here, maybe 37.80. So 37.89 will be key support. Now let's go back to what we're looking at here because we went apples to apples. So that this particular level right here at peak F with the doji candle reversal back in June, around about the 18th or so, and the high of three days ago, Friday, at 38.45, the technicals here, the MACD is very good. Stochastics at, uh, was at 83%, it's now at 82%. It's still good, it's not great. Um, but the quicker the stochastic falls from over 80% to under 80%, the quicker the price is going to fall. Whatever you're looking at, if it pops over 80 and then fails, be careful. You've got yourself a sharp pullback. What we've done here is we've made an island reversal Look at this, an iron reversal. It's just one of the techniques. Remember, I spoke about this way back uh, when Paul was emailing me about the, the gaps at the ups, on the upside. That was back, I think, in the August highs. And that there were a number of stocks that had iron reversals. It's just one of the techniques. I've seen iron reversals. Look at this. He has a little iron reversal. That never got filled. And eventually there was a pop-up and almost filled it. But these things might not get filled. I've seen it where they get filled suddenly and very quickly. So it's just one technique. The other technique is a peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology. Another technique is how it fails under the 14-period exponential moving average and how the green 9-period moving average is hold, if it's, it's still holding beautifully. And that just says we aren't yet ready to give a commitment in this even to a sell signal just yet. I have to wait even a little while longer. And then... To get a sell mode, you'd have to probably see it down to the 3580 level. And it's at 3667 right now, down 91 cents. This is the dog, the Pro Shares Trust Short Dow 30, which we are still long from way down there. Um, so that's for the longer term. I'll make a decision about that. I don't even mind losing, um, not losing money, but losing some of the profits if we really get the kind of signal that is a. <laughs> Just an outside possibility in the diamonds or the Dow uh, to say that it's going to go to a buy mode and then you, you're not even going to get to, uh, 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 in other words, the intermediate term, which we are still short, and the near term, how the conflict unfolds. We've done it before. We've held it all the way through big pop-ups in the, in the market before and said, no, we're expecting low lows. But now there's a lot of information. The heels are centric. What's going on at this particular moment is I begin to think we are making of the way through this whole what I call a recession. Maybe they don't officially call it a recession, but let's face it. Their semis are in a recession. The XOP is in it. a lot of a lot of uh, um, um, sectors that are in recession. I'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-827-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So just to get to some of the questions, um, I, I need just to show you this here because we had discussed it yesterday. So the bonds are up 24, 30 seconds at 129 and 230 seconds. I'm not anticipating that there's a huge change in the trajectory of yields just yet. Um, in other words, I don't anticipate that the at, at, in the 129s that bonds will go to the 134, 136 area, which is really where it, they would need to go if one was really contemplating that the Fed is not going to do anything. I think the Fed is going to try to hold this level they're going to uh, intimate that they have no problem uh, raising uh, raising rates further. And I think that's reflected here in the yields. Not only that, you've had a 30-year, what is it, 30-something year, a bull market in bonds. Uh, look, this is just a year, two years of de declining prices uh, in the bonds themselves. So it's kind of still early in the game. Uh, it's, you know, that's all I can say. Now, let's just do this. I'll go one, one step at a time. So I mentioned this to Kevin Hinks when I interviewed him uh, in Tommy's show. And they have a fabulous show called uh, to, called uh, Fast Market at uh, noon and uh, options and how to deal with just risk reward. I think it's just a, a tremendous show. So um, I, I asked him the question. I just mentioned the question that the XLF, the financials, didn't use the bond rally. Uh, so the bond decline with the yield rally as they often had done before is there something different he discussed it in, in a very cogent way and basically i want to look at bank of america the question came in because it's a stock that we've owned for my subscribers to the opening call for about maybe seven years or so every year we've had it and we try to get the lows uh, and and run it up all the way to some kind of a high this was uh, uh, in this particular instance the last high that we actually ran it up was uh, up in the 50, uh, what was it, 50.11 50. was the high back of peak D in February. And then we've had a, maybe one or two trades with a little bit of a profit, maybe a tiny loss uh, at other times. But it's been, it's not been good this year. It's been a, a stock that's just, we've just stepped aside for quite a, some time now. 
So I'm looking at it, and I think I would love for Bank of America to really start a big move up to the, well, today's a fabulous move up, 3.4%. But I think the sustained move is going to be an issue in the XLF, the financials themselves. So I don't know yet if if you are if you got into Bank of America say yesterday or anywhere below thirty one point thirty and it's trading at thirty two point sixty five, I say that's fine, because if this follow through to the upside, there's a lot of resistance levels in the thirty threes and even the thirty fours, but you're making money, so I'm not going to tell you to do anything else. But I will say that if it closes under thirty one thirty. At any point in the next two days, it just says, you know, it's not ready for prime time. And that goes with the whole XLF. Look, the financials, same thing. This is an island reversal. Yeah, wonderful. I love island reversals. But they can be filled in. Uh, look, this one here was filled in a little bit, and then it went even further. So you, you can't just think of them as in, in isolation. Uh, yeah, in isolation, if, you've, if you own one of these uh, island reversals, then you can go there on vacation. But look what happens. Sometimes they get filled in. So all I'm saying is this starts to get filled in, the XLF at 3165. It looks actually Bank of America's the same pattern right now. Um, and it goes under 3120. That's going to say, nah, not not yet. But I, I do like it, and I, I might consider it. I just think that there are other stocks that can give better upside action at this particular point. But if you have it, I'd just say um, – Raise your stop about a half a point for every three quarters of a point it rallies, just for the moment, and then you can start to reverse that. At every half point, you can add, and you can raise it three quarters of a point. So that that's another way to do it. Just a trading stop and let it go where it's going to go. I I like the action. I'm just saying, chart pattern wise, it's a little bit disappointing. The financials that they didn't use the high yields to actually rally. What are they using right now? I, I think talking about, you know, I just think an oversold condition more than anything else. Next question was IWM. IWM is the Russell 2000. Now, this is important. It did not take out the 162.48 low of June. Uh, it ran all the way to the 200s and then came all the way back to 163.58. And let me just double check. Is that correct? Yeah, 163.28. Uh, so it didn't take out that left side low. That's a successful test in the Chamberlain methodology. And it says if it rallies, it could go back over the previous high of consequence. Um, huh, I don't know about that. That is the high of 201.99 back in August. I, I'd go one step at a time. Uh, because it's successful, it says there's a good chance that in the weekly chart it could test the 14-period uh, moving average of 179.60, and if it does that, then the key so key resistance level will be 189.86 the week of the 16th of September. Let's just go one step at a time. But this is really good action, and in fact, my eye says that the low of, in the IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF, the low of the 22nd of September was 170.74. The high of um, the 28th, it was 170.99. So you see it filled that gap. But in a sense, it looks like an island reversal. So this is a good move. And the reason why I'm talking about it is that the, st the MACD is so close to turning positive. Stochastic's a little bit better than some of the others. It's at 19%. There's a W formation in the on-balance volume. And that says there's just a chance that in the short term, the IWM might again, it does that, not the weekly chart, but the daily chart very often has nicer chart patterns than the, the Dow or the S&P or the Qs, and then it fails. So is this, it's almost like gold has this, gold is doing well and silver's fading. Then all of a sudden, silver comes on really strong and gold catches up. And as soon as they catch up, silver starts to fail. So we'll see if that's the case here with the uh, the IWM. Is it is it telling us a story and then it it can't follow through? But I do like it. Is it a stock to own at this point? If it were, if you were going to lower down, I'd have no problem. I said just easy put in the stop so that no matter what happens, you're making some money. At this point, there's a risk of at 174. It could go look the low today is 172.53. That's two points. It's not a big deal on a $174 stock, 
But the trouble is, if it takes out 170 to 20, the 14 period moving average, it makes 170.40, the nine period moving average support. I find that it's just too big a, too big a, a risk reward, unless everything about it said the MACDs turned positive, the histogram is positive, and the stochastic is at 28% and 19%. I don't know about that, but at 28%, I'd say, you know what? I start a split position. I'd get something right here at 174.40. And I would add at 172, maybe 65, and I'd have a stop on each one so that at least one's left. Or you could have a stop on both of them, one stop on both of them, but you don't have to make it a little tighter, something like 171.10. So that's kind of odd. Oh, ARKK. <laughs> ARKK. Um, ARKK is ARK, the innovation ETF. Um, we'll talk about that as soon as I return. Yes, it's gone above the previous uh, peak, A minus. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, this is our Dazzle. 700 SPs of 97 be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So just um, ARKK was a question. ARKK is the ARK Innovation ETF. Big gap up today. <clears throat> Gone a little bit above the previous high. So this actually is the new leg, gray leg A. One of the reasons why I was very hesitant, we did it before, we had a fantastic series of gains in ARKK um, back, uh, when was it? Uh, it was right here, I guess it was. I, I think it was in June. And um, the reason why I didn't di dive in yesterday and I was going to do that, it would have been a nice move up with 38 into the 3940 area, um, is because there's... When I looked closely at some of those stocks, many of the stocks actually in the in the ARK Innovation ETF. This is Kathy Wood. It's her uh, 
uh, one of her funds. I felt that they really were struggling and they weren't showing leadership. Maybe at this point they'll start to show some leadership. So I like it if you were in it. Underneath the low today is 39.25. If you're in below 39, all I would do is a 39.91. I'd put a stop on part of my position at about 39, 38, 38, just under 39, 38.98, something like that. And another one to give it a little bit of room because this market does look like it, 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 it has the veracity from further upside activity over the week. Um, and then I would make a, a stop about a point lower than that uh, for the for so split the two, the position into two. If you aren't in it and you're looking to get in, I would do exactly the opposite. I would start a position. You could start, actually, I think thirty nine ninety five. I think you'll probably get it below thirty nine sixty today, but it doesn't matter. Thirty cents doesn't make any difference if it's able to get to the forty twos, the uh, fifty period exponential moving average. So I would start a position here. And if it's the only position you got, that's fine. But it would be a split position, one part here at 39.94, and another one just under 39. But the stops, I would have two separate stops. I'd have a stop on the one that you had at 39.94, and probably that one would be like 39.20. And I'd be ready to get another position with a tighter stop. And if you only have, in other words, it gets taken out and you only have the lower one and the lower one succeeds in going up, you can add back. You can add back to it on strength. But that's the only way I would do it right now. I think it's just a little bit vulnerable to about a 50 or even an 80 cent pullback. It's not a big deal if it's actually going to the 42s. But that's the way I'm looking. And that really chart went to a peak D. It's one of the weakest peak Ds we've seen. Uh, from the low that was made back in May, I think it was, going all the way to the high in, uh, in August, uh, peaked in and then pulls back. But it did not take out the left side low, and that's important. So I do think there's something there, and I'll be doing some work tonight on it, whether or not we want to get in. But if that was your question, what do I do now? That's my answer. My answer is, and if you haven't got anything in, you could buy around about this 39.87. I think it would probably get a little lower, but it doesn't matter. Start a split position. First part is right here. Second part is lower down. And um, you have to decide whether you have two separate stops or just a stop on the whole thing saying, I want to pull back. I don't want it as deep as my second position. I hope I miss my second position. But if I get it, that one's going to have a tighter stop. And maybe all of them together, the two of them together have a tight stop. But you, you've got a higher risk reward right now, just as we're looking at it, uh, only because it's had such a huge move up. OK, next question was gold. Uh, but this is gold, G-O-L-D. -O this is the old Barrick ASX. I think it used to be the symbol. Barrick Gold Core broke above the uh, resistance level that I chapter with inside track group Palin Zone. It's now propellant zone making the 1550s, 40s, 1540s very good support, trading at 16.28. So I guess the question is uh, you haven't got it. Uh, what is a good entry level? Here again, I'm going to talk about this. It's a little different because in the weekly chart, if it's able, it doesn't have to close, if it's able to push above the high that was made back in. August, yeah, August the 19th, the high was 1688. The high today is 1642. The way it's acting, 1688 shouldn't be a problem. That's going to be really important because it will be, look, we've touched the 14-period uh, moving average for the first time since it broke down back in uh, May in the 23s. So this is going to be very important. And it's also, you've got your Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone right there. It succeeded. It means there's a chance that this particular pattern can become some kind of a cup formation. And that's going to be important because you've got two dreaded H's, like a lowercase m with lower lows, but only just lower lows. So yes, gold is acting very well. Barrick gold. I don't like the monthly chart. In fact, there's some charts that are much, much better looking than Barrick at this particular point. But you asked me about GOLD at 1631. And guess what I'm going to say? I think it's over. Let me do the 120 minute chart. Uh, 120, here we go. 120, 120, 120, 120. Okay, is it there? Uh, there it is. Good. 
click, there it is. 120 minute chart, let's just do that. The chapter wave notation. But yes, you're, uh, this is easy to do. I can just go with an up arrow. Obviously, there's an up arrow here. And this is peak A. A. Hmm, I don't want to miss anything. My eye usually picks out 88, 89. Yep, that's right. So this is B. And there's a very clear C. And there's your D. So it's already at D. I think gold and and G O L D in particular, Barry Gold, tad overbought, tad overbought. Um, <coughs> that doesn't mean to say they have to sharply pull back, but they are somewhat overbought. Well, gold, Barry Gold is overbought on the 120 minute chart, and the 200 period moving average is 1558. I'm going to suggest that you split the position. You start a position. I know that this would be a, a little toppy right now. For instance, the stock that we bought, the, the silver stock, had a spectacular move. And I said today, in, in two days, I said, we've got to take money at the open, even though that wasn't uh, either at the open or intra, uh, in, in the morning, as soon as my newsletter was out. So we took between an 18 or 20% gain on a little bit. And now look what it's done. It's pulled back sharply. Um, it hit $4.04, I think. That was one of my targets. And it's trading at 377 right now. <laughs> I mean, that's a big pullback, right? So that's why you've got to be quick with these things. So I'm suggesting that you get, you either have patience to buy it under 16. Not a big deal. It's at 1629. What's the big deal if it's going to retest the high that was made and in the 1680s or whatever it is at that peak F top? But I don't have that confidence just yet that it is 1688, that it is going to go to the 17th right at this moment. So my thinking here is split it, 1628, start your position. I would start the smaller position of the split here, and I would have a bigger position at about 1583. And on that one, I'd have maybe a 1520 stop on at least some of the position. But I like it. It is only a leg A. In the daily, it's a leg A, gray. This is, I have to call this almost a buy signal because the stochastics at 75%. So it's not a buy signal yet in the daily. Weekly has a lot to go before I can give it even a buy signal. So this is just a starter position, 1627. As I say, I refer somewhere in the 1580s, maybe 1570s. That would be the, the next position. And if it gets away from you, we can talk about adding. But I think you need to be in it right now. If, you want, if this is where you want to, if you like it, you've got to get your foot in the door. It's right in the door as we speak. It's 1629. I'll be back. We'll think about a little more about ARKK and Jets and CF. I'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Avery White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50.
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. On the 22nd of June, the Chun gauge hit point 10. So I just wanted to clarify that uh, I, we have different uh, software programs, uh, uh, and um, in the Dan, uh, who was it, uh, said uh, the Chin was uh, made a low, uh, year-to-date low of 0.26 on Chin, time to short, says S uh, Sanel. No, I've got this as a 0.10. But it is extremely, we did a 0.29 way back there. That was uh, August the 8th, 2021. Uh, and then it's a pullback, the market pulled back it's, uh, just for a few days. And then it screamed higher to higher highs. So, yeah, I use it's called the Chapman Wave Trin Gauge. Really, it's Richard Arms Trin Gauge. He's a short term trading index. I call it the Trin Gauge. I only use numbers. I, I, I don't use his technique. I don't even know what his technique is. Uh, but uh, when the numbers are certain, below a certain point, uh, like today, it says that there should be a negative Dow tomorrow, the very next day or in the morning. It should be. It's usually in the morning. It could be a little later. But it, there should be a negative Dow and, uh, before it starts to rally again. So that's my rule of thumb. And when it is higher above a certain level, it means within two days, the E-mini futures, no matter how negative things look, the E-mini futures should have a 9 to 11 point rally or even more to help the market come off a low. So within that context, yeah. So and if you're looking at this chart on the right here, this is the daily Dow with it. This is the um, this is with a, a, Ch a Chapman Wave index here. This is the 9 over the 14. It's just done in one line. If it's pink, it's negative. To turn around and become green, you're going to have to move so much. 30,500 somewhere, I'm sure, would have to be hit before you can change that pink line to green. So this is still early in the early in the stages. And I do believe just that we're going to have some kind of a digestive phase in the um, uh, in the in the market intraday. Uh, let me just see here. This is the E-mini. I had a peak E in the 10-minute chart. I had a peak E in the, um, oh, yeah, a peak E in the one-minute chart. Remember the rectangle formation? The longer you stay in the rectangle formation, there's a chance you could pop out. This is going to peak A, peak B, peak C. Yeah, there's a chance you can pop out, but if you take out that border on the, on the low side, be careful. You could do a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. If at any point the uh, E-mini trading at 37.90 up 101 starts to trade under 37.80 for three, uh, how, how would I put this? I'd say three out of five bars, there's a really good chance that the 200-period moving average of 37.68 gets hit. All right? And it will take a move above 38.05. To say, ah, ah, I refuse to go down. I'm just making higher highs today. I think we're ready for some kind of intraday consolidation. It might just go back to where it was an hour or so ago. All right. So, um, Ionic, uh, generate, optimize, execute quantum circuits. Nice move up today, up 9% at 5.75. 
<coughs> yeah, this is me and my list for subscribers. We haven't done anything about it. I just, I, I was just wondering um, how the, the whole area of the software, the packaging of software, how it's going to unfold in this particular time frame because of ARKK. They're all in the same kind of category, ARKK. Um, so, yeah, at 40.39, uh, this is the same as the others. I, I, I went through this, but this is, you've got to split along. If you, want, if you haven't got anything now and you want to get it, you just have to split it and say, I'm taking, it is a gamble because we're only just coming off lows, but they're pretty serious lows. And the market had two huge days. It's ready for a digest. I'd say have a little patience. Put it on your list. If, you're, if, you, if your risk reward says, I like the kind of thing that ARKK does as a chart pattern, these big moves, and then big moves down, big moves up, in a, a quick move, and then a sharp move down, this is in play. So don't, don't avoid it because of that. Just do your homework. Our next question I had was, oh, Jets. Uh, jets, very nice move. And this is the U.S. Global Jets ETF. It is imperative that the IYT, I did that, did I do it during Tommy's show or did I do it in mine? Anyway, it's imperative that the transports and especially the, the um, airline ETFs, the airline ETF and the airlines themselves, have a, not just a bounce today, they have to have, now that's, it says a G here, but they, you don't have H's in the Chapman Way methodology. So this is an alternate count. D-E, there's no other way to count it. This is A, this is G slash B, and that's a C. All right, we're going to a C. What can I do? Sometimes they fail, but very rarely. And it, that didn't go to a D. So far, that's your C. And now you've got a spike in the weekly chart. Yeah, if the uh, Jets... ETF is able at 1621 right now. By f so this is only Tuesday. If by Friday it's even touched, I don't care about closing above it, but gone to the 50 period moving average at 17. I would say that's a really good sign. And that's a sign to say that this move has legs. And what we've got here is both a short squeeze. But there will be new buying if there's a sustained move. In other words, any pullback, if it doesn't become a sharp pullback, instead you just keep like we're watching even now, you're getting buying come in. That's just going to force the shorts and force new longs to come in. That's what you want to see. There is a trend line. Yes, thank you very much. I'll do that. All right there. Where's the chat wave inside track from that peak F top that was made back in August? Uh, where I'm going to be conservative. I'm going to go into the body of this candle right here and to the high of the candle. Then I'll draw the parallel line, little mini 3 sixteenths of an inch or whatever it is. Chapman wave inside track repellent zone, and there it is. So 17 takes you out of it. It doesn't matter. I'm saying above 17 is going to be good action, and it must last. It couldn't go to, go to 17, and the next thing that's trading is 16.03. I want 17 holding at 1680 and then 1723. That'll be a very good move and suggest time and price is in this move to the upside. Next question I had was, oops, uh, C oh, CF. One of my favorites, uh, we had it, we had some good profits in it, then got taken out, tried to get back in the other day, just got taken out, unfortunately. And here CF is trading at 103.39. CF Industries um, Holdings, Hydrogen, nitrogen products for clean energy, fertilizer, emission abatement. <coughs> what I'd said, what is, there's nothing wrong. I mean, that's everything that you're looking for in a stock. So it did pull back from 119.60 on the 26th of August down to 90.26, just above the 200 period moving average. It's now 103 points higher. So the question is, do I get in? And the answer is, I think it's in play. What I mean by in play, it means that it could pull back, but there are enough sudden spikes to the upside to get you out at least at maybe break even. So I'm going to suggest here again, split position, 103.44. Start your, start your engines right here at 133.44, but 99, the whole 99 area, under, under 100, or maybe let's say 100, between 100.20 and 99.80. 
that's where you would add a second position. If you miss the second position because it keeps rounding, that's fine. You'll deal with that. But that's the way I would do it. Basil Chapman, final segment to go. Dow's up 700. S&P's up 100. I'll be right Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So looking at the 10-minute chart of the gold, uh, this is the continuous contract. We've got a peak A. We've got a peak B, and it's in legs. Oh, that should be an uppercase B. And a C, leg C. It could be a peak C if we run out of time. This 10-minute chart has got a little bit to go. And then maybe makes a D and pulls back. Let's look at crude oil. Oh, uh, crude oil is typing in over there. Here we go. Uh, it's gone peak A. This is just in the latest move. A, B, C, D. And that's I'm this is a continuous contract E F and I'm calling this a G, but I usually say G slash C. And it's starting to pull back. It's up 267, still looking very, very good at 86.32. The key support is at 8510, uh, 8511. If it starts to trade under 8511, could pull back a little bit uh, deeper than that. But so far, it's acting extreme. Was that 85 or 86? Yep, it is 85. So that's that. So let's just do this. ESZ22. Uh, we're looking at, uh, where did I type that? Doesn't matter. E ESZ22. Mm -mm. 
Yeah. So it's, it, you remember the rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patient, the narrow rectangle formation. And that's where we went to the bottom of it. Now we're going to the top. It is pink, meaning that the, it hasn't turned green to say it's in a buy signal or anything like that. It's just stuck in this range. I, it's, I, I'll do this again. A close below 37.68 at any point today. So a quick move down to the 37.70 200 period moving average is possible. If it starts to hold about 38.03, wow, it could force even more people into the market. So as I say, this is going to be a very interesting couple of days. Um, we are still along from yesterday morning in the Dow and the near term. <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's going to be a very interesting week close because we want to see how the how any pullbacks hold.